Chapter 1. The Journey Begins My name is Lily, and I am from a small village in Taiwan. I am 20 years old, and I have always dreamed of traveling the world. My family is traditional, and my parents are hardworking farmers. They have always provided for us, and I have two younger brothers and an elder sister. We live a simple but content life, surrounded by the lush green fields and the chirping of birds every morning. However, my heart yearns for adventure and new experiences beyond our village. One morning, as I helped my mother prepare breakfast, I decided to share my dream with her. I told her about my desire to travel to different countries, learn new languages, and immerse myself in various cultures. She looked at me with concern and said, Traveling is dangerous, Lily. The world beyond our village is not as safe as you think. Despite her worries, I couldn't let go of my dream. I spent weeks planning and saving up money from my part-time job at a local cafe. Finally, I had enough to buy a ticket to my first destination, Japan. I chose Japan because it was nearby and I had always been fascinated by its culture and language. The day of my departure arrived and my family gathered to see me off. My father, who rarely expressed his emotions, gave me a tight hug and said, be careful, Lily. Remember, home is always here for you. With tears in my eyes, I waved goodbye and boarded the plane. Chapter 2. The First Encounter Upon arriving in Tokyo, I was overwhelmed by the sheer size and energy of the city. The neon lights, bustling streets, and the sound of people speaking a language I barely understood filled me with excitement and a slight sense of fear. I checked into a small hostel in the heart of the city and decided to explore. As I wandered through the streets, I stumbled upon a traditional tea house. The aroma of fresh tea leaves drew me in, and I decided to take a break. The owner, an elderly woman named Mrs. Nakamura, welcomed me warmly. She spoke a little English, enough to understand that I was a traveler from Taiwan. She offered me a cup of matcha tea, and we began to chat. Mrs. Nakamura told me about the history of the tea house, which had been in her family for generations. She shared stories of her ancestors and their dedication to preserving traditional tea-making techniques. I was captivated by her tales and felt a deep sense of respect for her heritage. As the days passed, I visited Mrs. Nakamura's tea house regularly. She taught me how to prepare matcha tea properly, and we became good friends. One evening, she invited me to join her family for dinner. It was a traditional Japanese meal, with dishes I had never tasted before. The flavors were exquisite, and the warmth of her family's hospitality made me feel at home. Chapter 3. A Lesson in Language Determined to make the most of my time in Japan, I enrolled in a language course to learn Japanese. The classes were challenging, but I was eager to communicate more effectively with the locals. My classmates were from various parts of the world, and we bonded over our shared struggles with the language. One day, our teacher, Mr. Sato, took us on a field trip to a nearby temple. He explained the significance of the temple in Japanese culture and taught us how to pray and make offerings. The serene environment and the sound of the wind chimes created a peaceful atmosphere. I felt a deep sense of connection with the place and the people around me. After the temple visit, we sat in a small garden and practiced our Japanese. Mr. Sato encouraged us to speak with confidence, even if we made mistakes. He said, learning a language is not just about grammar and vocabulary. It's about understanding the culture and the people who speak it. His words resonated with me, and I felt more motivated than ever to improve my Japanese. Chapter 4. New Friendships As I became more comfortable with the language, 
I started to explore Tokyo more independently. One afternoon, I visited a local market where I met a young woman named Yuki. She was selling handmade crafts and spoke fluent English. We struck up a conversation, and I learned that she had studied in the United States for a few years. We exchanged contact information and decided to meet up again. Over the next few weeks, Yuki and I became close friends. She introduced me to her circle of friends, and we often went out for dinner, karaoke, and sightseeing. They were all very welcoming, and I felt like I had found a second family in Japan. One weekend, Yuki invited me to her family's home in the countryside. The journey was long, but the scenic views of mountains and rivers made it worthwhile. Her family lived in a traditional Japanese house, surrounded by rice fields and cherry blossom trees. They greeted me with open arms and treated me like one of their own. We spent the weekend exploring the countryside, visiting local shrines, and participating in a traditional tea ceremony. Yuki's grandmother, who was in her 80s, taught me how to wear a kimono properly. It was a beautiful experience, and I felt honored to be part of their family traditions. Chapter 5. The Challenge As my time in Japan came to an end, I faced a new challenge. I had always wanted to climb Mount Fuji, the highest peak in Japan. It was a daunting task, but I was determined to achieve it before leaving. I joined a group of hikers and set off early in the morning. The climb was physically demanding, and there were moments when I doubted my ability to reach the summit. However, the support and encouragement from my fellow hikers kept me going. After hours of strenuous climbing, we finally reached the top. The view from the summit was breathtaking. The sky was clear, and I could see the entire landscape stretching out before me. It was a moment of triumph and fulfillment. I felt a sense of accomplishment and gratitude for the journey I had undertaken. Chapter 6 A New Beginning Returning to Taiwan, I felt like a different person. My experiences in Japan had taught me valuable lessons about perseverance, friendship, and the importance of understanding different cultures. I was more confident and eager to continue my adventures. I shared my stories with my family, and though they still worried about my safety, they were proud of what I had achieved. My younger brothers and sister looked up to me as an inspiration, and I encouraged them to follow their dreams, no matter how challenging they might seem. With a renewed sense of purpose, I began planning my next trip. There were so many places to explore and so much to learn. I knew that each journey would bring new experiences and opportunities for growth. As I packed my bags for my next adventure, I felt a sense of excitement and anticipation. The world was vast, and I was ready to embrace it with open arms. My journey had just begun, and I couldn't wait to see where it would take me next.